John Chandler was a visionary and an entrepreneur. He prized initiative and free enterprise. He dreamt big, but was able to put dreams into action. John Chandler was remarkable in the combination of strengths that he brought to Queensland. Firstly, as an entrepreneur and an innovator in his radio and television business, also in the way in which he brought his business principles to the administration of the city. He was Lord Mayor for 11 years. He went through four elections and won those. He was able to sacrifice his own salary to help with the financing of Brisbane. Clem Jones, Brisbane's longest serving Lord Mayor, said that Sir John Chandler was Brisbane's greatest Lord Mayor. He started work at 12. He then realised that there wasn't a future for him there. Somebody told him there was a good place called Queensland, so he got assisted passage here. Had to work in the claim fields for two years and then came down to Brisbane and started up his first business. He arrived in Australia with no money. He worked very hard to get a little bit of money. He invested that money and worked harder, but certainly he never had a silver spoon. All that time he was still always very humble and still deep inside he was the penniless immigrant. John Chandler started his first business in 1913, just at the beginnings period of the First World War. The 20s were quite good years. That was a time when modern life finally started to infiltrate Australia. But then it was followed by the Great Depression. The Depression was one of the things that he conquered in the he started off with crystal sets, then started into the radio stations, then started into the finance companies, and he worked his way through the Depression. For BC, and BC obviously stands for Beals Chandler, but it was one of the first radio stations in Queensland. His foray into it started with the test in England, and he managed to get exclusive rights. Now, having Don Bradman batting, and I think he made 232 not out, and the whole of Australia managed to listen. That gave a huge impetus to the radio station. He had the ability to promote both Chandler's, but also many other products, while other radio stations were floundering. He bought 4BH at a reasonably good price. He put in the first of many innovative things. He put in the first cereals. Once you got the advertising dollars coming in, the station became profitable. Radio took off exponentially. Scale was the only way you could get listeners. Listeners were the only way you could get advertising. He set up stations all around Queensland and most of them are country stations. 4BH was number one radio station in Queensland. 4BH had radio, covered the football, covered music, covered happy hours, had all the children's programs and did extremely well for a lot of years. He was a visionary. He had been uh, some time in America where he saw what was happening there. He was looking for opportunities 20 years ahead of his time. He understood what was coming and he capitalised on it, a lot of it at a later date, as time went by, that he was ahead of the pack. Setting up a high purchase company back in 1932 was unusual. His idea wasn't to make the money. His idea was to give everybody the opportunity to own a radio set, especially during times of depression, especially during times of war where people needed it for all the knowledge and to know what was going on in the country. The community were well aware that there were problems in the Brisbane City Council. Now, some would have said to take that on was accepting a poison chalice. John Chandler agreed to serve the city as Lord Mayor. He said, because Queensland has treated me well, I want to give them something in return. His legacy is really to be seen in his belief in town planning. He was also convinced that a good city would have a green belt around the sprawling suburbs. 
He believed that it was possible to do this for Brisbane without having to resume land. John Chandler was a man of enormous energy. If you just think of his career during the Second World War, he was Lord Mayor of Brisbane. For a while during the war, he was a member of the State Parliament. He continued to run his business. He was very much involved in the patriotic funds, raising money for the service people overseas. He managed to help the war effort with AWA in putting in radar and sonar machines on Allied ships and Australian ships. I don't know how he fitted it in. Politically idealistic, he was a man of vision, committed to capitalism, but with a human face. I think he was a man of great integrity and more than ordinary honesty. The fact that he was a practicing Anglican meant that he had that wider concern for society. I think he really did believe that it was a civic government's duty to increase social welfare in the broadest sense. And I think he was very likable too. It does seem that very few people left his employment, either at Chandler or at the City Hall, and that says a lot. I managed to get franchises from major companies worldwide. They got Akai, for instance, they had Whirlpool, they had AWA and they had Sunbeam. That allowed them to participate both in the retail and wholesale market. But Chandler's brand was there for not just selling goods, Chandler's brand was there for looking after the service and to give them a very good high purchase company. They were a, a very ethical, very generous firm and that gave them the reputation. Well, Chandler's was definitely number one retailer in Queensland, I would think, by a long way. My father ran it from uh, JB's death and he had a fairly tough time in the 60s with a big credit squeeze. That went through, Dad ran it until his death. Uh, it was taken over just prior to my father's death by Development Holdings and Winchcombe Carson. The Chandler's famous brand was, we stand behind the product we sell. 